Hi, we learned just after recording our preview show of the tragic passing of former Ireland international and women's senior head coach, Tom Tierney, taken from us way too young at 46. May he rest in peace and our thoughts are with his family and friends at this time. Hi, it's Jeff here. Before we start our latest Six Nations pod, just a quick word to remind you of the Harp and Guinness Pine Predictor League. If you think you can predict the scores from this year's Six Nations better than our panelists, then why not prove it by first downloading the free Fanzo app, then joining our league, just enter the code HARPIN, that's H-A-R-P-I-N. There's a signed copy of the book on how to become a pro rugby player by Brian Moylet to be won by the best score in a single Six Nations round. The leader so far is Jack Fogarty with 58 points in round two, and you'll have three more chances to beat that. And of course, you can also win a free pint from every match just by getting close enough to the right result. Right. On with the preview show. Hi, my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to the Harpen and Rugby Preview Show. Joining me to look ahead to the Six Nations action this coming Saturday is someone earning cap number 47. Welcome back to Mr. Neil Kigo Keegan. 47. Do I get some sort of prize when we hit 50? Or? We're, working on, we're working on something, all right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll talk about that as we get closer. Now, uh, before we get to this week's preview, Kigo, um, we last saw you just before the win over France. So why don't you tell us what you make of Ireland's Six Nations campaign so far? Um, I love it. Uh, Obviously, but I think the things we are learning over the last kind of two years or so is, is really coming to the fore. You look at the France game last year where we had that slow start and we, we crawled our way back and we're close at the end. Uh, you look at uh, what Leinster have been doing. Uh, they've been starting strong and we've been starting strong, uh, even though like in November, the first test, you and I spoke and we were upset with the result, but not overly worried. You could see what was going on. And I think the lesson, final lesson learned from that tour was we need to start well. Uh, and you look at the opening half in our first game against Wales, and I know they have their own issues and all that sort of stuff, but they had no chance. Um, the, the momentum was knocked out of them. And it was, you'd pay twice the price, even though the tickets are too high, you'd pay twice the price to watch that ball. Um, and then we, we had France, which was kind of built as a, it is 1v2, but it's, um, we're looking down the road uh, France weren't met here, to, weren't messing around. We had a couple of injuries and things like that. I was watching it again there two days ago. And if you take the emotion of the day and the worry of the day out as we were all watching it, we weren't worried. If you watch it as a cyborg, there was no reason to be worried. Even when they, they were, there were moments of greatness from France. They have those players. We have a couple of those players. They have more. But if you look at everything that we were worried about, the pack, uh, not worried about the back row, but that kind of DuPont circle in the middle there, it was nullified. Uh, some, like DuPont's a, a freak of nature. Uh, and if you take him out of that team, it's a different team. Whereas Ireland has um, obviously Sexton, but there are players that can, can circle out and circle back in. And it's relatively close. We were worried about Bielham and Furlong. Bielham has been working so hard in the last... 18, he's been working hard forever, but I mean, the, the, the results are visible to us uh, in the last 18 months, two years. He plays a different game, as we say, but there was no, uh, no let up in terms of that scrum. It held up against those monsters. We've got, to, we've got to now balance keeping calm with welcoming this favourites tag. So this is the next battle, and we always face this battle every, every World Cup cycle because it does happen until we break it. And I think, I think the way Farrell has set up camp, the way everyone is speaking, the O'Mahony contract, I think is really good business. Um, I, I, and I think the players coming in this weekend, that really makes everyone feel involved. There won't be a starting 15 and everybody else. Every, there is no such thing as a starting 15 anymore. Massively positive. I'm very giddy and excited. So now it's your job to keep me calm for the rest of this mm -hmm. podcast. Well, I mean, it's a natural state for us as fans to, I mean, we're, we're the ones who obsess about it and we're literally counting down the minutes and the seconds uh, to kick off. Right? So it's natural for us to be worried, to be thinking about things that are going to wrong. But I think what we've seen about uh, this Andy Farrell team is how they, um, it, it, that doesn't translate to them. They, 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 they're focused on what they need to do. 
And we've seen over time, it doesn't matter who comes in, goes out of the team. There's a general, like you say, there's a squad focus on what needs to be done and getting the job done. And they've already, you know, they, they beat New Zealand. They won a triple crown last year. They've, they've, they've played several games now with the number one tag. And um, they're the ones that are getting used to it. And uh, like we always go back to the, that documentary at Christmas time when what Johnny mm-hmm. Sexton at the end about their overall goal and what it is. And it's not oh. just, it's, it's not just getting to the last four. Oh. Um, why, why would it? be when you think about it um so you know it all comes down to that so it, it, it should be that if they're not if they're if, if they're that confident maybe so should we because that doesn't translate back to the fans we're always going to be worried we're always going to nitpick and besides if we were that confident we wouldn't have a preview show like this to do so uh, <laughs> let's, let's crack on anyway um so it's now it's time to start harping on this week's feature match like i say which as you can see there is italy v ireland it's in round three of the 2023 Guinness Six Nations, and it kicks off at the Stadio Olimpico on uh, at 2:15 uh, p.m. on Saturday, February the 25th. And the match is being broadcast on our natural bro- national broadcaster and also ITV One. Ireland named their starting lineup on Thursday, so let's have a look. Starting with the back line at uh, fullback, we've got Hugo Keenan. The uh, wingers are James Lowe, Mac Hansen. The centers Bundyaki and Gary Ringrose, and the halfbacks are Craig Casey and Ross Byrne. Uh, I think going into this game, we've got to change our thinking a wee bit. We used to be overly respectful of Italy, um, saying certain things beforehand. I I think we've we've got to be professional, but I don't think we should be treating opposition. We shouldn't be talking them up. Italy are 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 doing what Italy do. They're 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 slowly coming back, and that's great. Uh, I didn't mean it to sound as sarcastic as I made it sound, but. We need. We should be putting a big score on this team with the team we've got. Uh, I think. I think with Casey starting the game, um, and, and again, no, no issue with Murray, it, all that sort of stuff. But Casey's going to fling that ball around so fast, it's it's going to be like it's on fire. So that means Casey's uh, uh, Burns going to have more time. That means everyone's going to have more time. I think Aki uh, and and Ringrose together. I do love that partnership because they are different players. Um, they do different jobs for each other. Uh, I know um, Henshaw is a similar 12, but there's a bit more of a boot off Henshaw than Aki. But I love that midfield. Um, and I, you know what I mean? It's The guys are coming back in. Aki's going to get minutes in the boots. I, I'm worried about the amount. Worried. Questioning is the wrong word. I've got to refine the right word. Ringrose has a lot of minutes in those boots this year. Now, he's fit. He's strong. He's bigger than he was last year. Doesn't look in any way fatigued. But... It, you know what I mean? He's there because they're bringing Aki in. That's my only question about that, the amount of minutes in his boots. But everybody else, low on one side, you know, uh, Keenan, new contract, great business. This is a great back line. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose the uh, the thing for Ringrose is that he's he's the probably the, the most senior na- uh, player in that group, and he's the leadership of, of the backs, I suppose, as, mm-hmm. seeing, seeing who's taken over the, the starting. But uh, no, you're right. I mean, it, it's, it is a time to, to it is, uh, you know, of the five matches, you don't want to take it for granted, but it is the time when you're going to try other things maybe. And uh, this completely new uh, halfback pairing, it's going to be interesting to see how they play. Ross Byrne, we all know he's well used to taking the reins, playing when, when sex is not available. Uh, he's going to have Casey alongside him. They, they don't have a lot of time together and Casey likes to play quicker. Ross likes to maybe stand back a bit more and do a bit more kicking around, but there's so many options in that back line for them to use. And, you know, no doubt, no reason to doubt they won't be totally ready for it. Okay. We'll move on to the forwards now. Now, um, the front row is Andrew Porter, Ronan Kelleher, and Finley Beam. Second row, Ian Henderson and James Ryan, who's the captain. And the back row, Quaylen Doris at six, uh, Josh Van Der Feer and uh, Jack Conan. Uh, always great to see Jack Conan start a game. Uh, it's amazing. A player like him, as we say, every single week doesn't get more starts in the green jersey. That shows the depth there. Back row to one side. Um, again, similar to ring rows, there's a lot of minutes in Porter's boots. Uh, it's actually amazing how much he's played. Um, I, it, the reverse of ring rows, he's actually dropped a tiny bit of weight and I think he's moving even faster. How that body is holding together, I don't know. Uh, Henderson, um, it'll be interesting to see. He, we're we're kind of hoping he's going to be that strong scrummager there in the second row beside captain uh, who is who's back on form. But Henderson said something interesting. Was it Henderson? Um, where they're not, if you're not picked, it's not a down in the dump situation like it used to be. I'm phrasing it, paraphrasing it the wrong way. But everyone is in it together. And that's what we were talking about earlier, which is a great thing. You mean it's not a conspiracy like they say on Twitter? 
What's the what, oh what, my how goodness. could that possibly be? <laughs> Sorry to mention Twitter, the two words. <laughs> Twitter and absent small doses, <laughs> and that's it. Okay, but um, no, but no right. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing Hendo kind of come back into full fitness because that that job at, in that position is really really important because we were worried going into Wales and France that they were going to go diagonally across the scrum over Beelham. Now Beelham stopped them and 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 fair play but there's still a job to do back there in the second row i think uh, ryan as the captain is a massive statement it could have easily been ring rose but as you say he's obviously part of the conversation um but i think ryan is back on form he actually looks bigger stronger faster um and i think that those two guys that could be our um our main second row if we can get hendo Hendo back up to fitness because of the different jobs they do and then you've got Ty Byrne, who's still there when he's when he's getting well soon, and he can go in at six. He can go in in the second row. He can go anywhere in the back row. So I think that that might be that might be what the guys are looking at. Our our World Cup final second row. I got to say it out loud. Um, you, if you wish, if you will it, do it. It is no dream, as it says in the Big Lebowski. Um, Hendo needs to get back to fitness, so he has a big job to do. But again, you can't argue with any of the selections. Yeah, and uh, I suppose if Italy are going to target anything in the in the in the Irish setup, it's going to have to be the set piece. So we're yeah. going to need um, we're going to need a solid scrum, and we're going to need a good lineout calls as well. With Tyburn and Peter Romani not starting, they're, they're usually big parts of the you know the the, the likes of Henderson and, and Conan left to come in and slot into those roles. And uh, James Ryan's calling is going to be important as well, so it's a big feature on the day. So we'll see how that goes. Right, we'll move on to the bench now, um, and we've got at sixteen Dan Sheehan. The other front rowers are Dave Kilcoyne and Tom O'Toole. Um, uh, Ryan Baird is uh, the is and Peter Romani are the other forwards and uh, the backs are Connor Murray, Jack Crowley, and Stu McCluskey. Interesting stuff. Uh, look at that front row that's going to come on. You look at the job Tom O'Toole has been doing. Absolutely, he as momentum was di- not dissipating but kind of waning a little bit. He comes on and and just really he goes right up the guts and it was brilliant. He made line made yards every single time. Beyond saluted. Uh, great to see Dan Sheehan back. I uh, can't remember what his injury was. Was he hamstring as well? Mm. So, yeah, that's that's something we got to look at after this in general, the hamstring injuries. Um, but Jack Crowley getting on, he's going to get a few minutes. That's going to be great for him down the line. Do you bring him to a World Cup this year? It's a nice problem to have. I'm not too sure, but but it, this is a just-in-case call with Sexton being rested. But, like, that is that is an unbelievable bench. Crowley can go in the middle as well. Um, and there's a lot of people who can move around like that back row. They can play any of the three. So it's it's a it's a cheeky bench. Like again, people were complaining about certain things. Players not being brought in. Gavin Coombs, things like that. He'll get there. There's no there's another break after this, but he will get there. Um, you know, Carberry's back in the squad. These people will get back in. But these are the players who have been in and out of Ireland camp relatively long term. Like there's videos of Crowley. Uh, being a water boy and being around camp for a long time. So this is this is just the next step for him. Yeah, a lot of the oxygen was taken about people missing from the team um, was over Gavin Coombs. And there's no doubt he's playing well and he got a big hat trick last week. But, you know, you can look at other names. Jimmy O'Brien as well would consider yeah. himself unlucky. He had a good November. But like you say, I mean, it's not. And from what Henderson said, they're not sitting there feeling sorry for themselves. Whatever's going on in, in the, with the Twitterati, um, they know themselves that they have a role to play in the squad, and they know that uh, if, they, if, they, if a chance comes for them, they're ready to take it, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tight squad. Yep. Sorry, just one thing. You, you mentioned Twitterati and all that sort of stuff, and we know it's, it's, it's not real, but mm. Twitter is thinking like, they, like we thought Joe Schmidt era. They're not thinking now. No matter how many times they're, to- they're, they're told by players, they don't believe it. They're, they're thinking there's a starting 15, um, and, and that's, that's what we use. And we've got to bring in players to, to satellite that. Whereas now, there's no such thing as a starting 15. There's a whatever game you want to play, there's a player to play that game. Uh, and I think this is another example of it. Like If you look at the players that are missing, um, that are hopefully coming back next week. I think there's rumors of people furlong and etc. coming back uh, next game. But this is this is the coach and the coaching team keeping everyone 100% invested. And there are players who are given shots like Crowley, and there are players who are coming back. Joey back in the squad. 
um, and good business in, in the satellite of that, Keenan, O'Mahony, all this sort of stuff. It's not just about the pitch. It's all about in here as well. Showing up to camp, no matter you're in a bib or a jersey, you're still playing for a spot. And it's just fantastic. Absolutely. Breaking news. And I'm being handed. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm being handed this late breaking news. Um, I Apparently, we were just talking about Gary Ringrose there. And uh, apparently, he's actually not in the team. He's been pulled out of the team with uh, McCossie going in to start and uh, Jimmy O'Brien gone to the bench. So, a bit of late breaking news. Keegan, what do you make of that? Absolutely. Anytime Ringrose is not on the pitch, it's a bad, it's a bad scene. I'm just scrolling through Twitter here because it happened as we were talking. Uh, this is kind well, of they like, obviously you know, heard what we were saying about him maybe starting too much and uh, absolutely yeah because it's uh, I'm just reading here it, apparently there's an injury since the France game that hasn't cleared up so yeah listen this is the game we can rest them uh, look Jimmy O'Brien's ready to rock McCluskey is ready to rock um, it's going to be interesting to see McCluskey and Aki as a midfield partnership because they're both they're both big boys they're both big units and so eventually we're going to get Jimmy in. With, as him at 12, him at 13, it's going to be interesting to see. He's played everywhere for Leinster. Uh, good for Gary. Anytime you see him on your screen or live, it's worth twice the price. Hopefully he gets well soon and he's ready to rock for the next game. Absolutely. And we know Stu is well able of uh, st- stepping up. He already has twice for Ireland and um, he's, 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 he's more than capable. It's a great, still a great center pairing. And we know, of course, Jimmy O'Brien cover loads of positions uh, from the bench. So there's no trouble there. Okay. Thanks for that. Listen, a little bit of, a bit of late breaking news doesn't often happen as we're recording, but at least we were able to get to it. Absolutely. Jimmy O'Brien, more positions than the Kama Sutra. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to have a look at our opposition, which of course is Italy. As ever, my graphics department is putting the names on the screens. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, they can be found in the program notes. How do you think Italy's lineup is looking, Giga? Uh, look, Italy are going to do what they're going to do. They're, they're going to do what they're going to try and do. Um, I don't think they would have targeted us as a as a performance or a win. Um, I think they. I'm trying to remember. Have they played. They haven't played Wales yet. Have they played? They haven't played Wales yet. So I think that's their that's their big game. Uh, I know they had a good opener against France, but France did what we did in November, took a while to warm up. Um, Italy are just looking to to not be good. They're not going to be competitive. We've got to um, we've got to phrase this as number one in the world. Then they shouldn't be competitive. They won't stop. They'll they'll continue all the way through. They shouldn't be competitive. They shouldn't be close on the scoreboard. So their wins are going to be. For example, they're going to try and keep the missed tackle count down. They're going to try and keep the penalty count down. They're going to look at those kind of stats as opposed to uh, line breaks, clean breaks, things like that. So um, they're, they're going to come. They're going to try. There's only so much they're going to be able to do. Yeah, I mean, a lot's been made of uh, like those defeats against uh, France and England they've had so far. Uh, they didn't have Garbisi, who was kind of their 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 star 10 at the moment but uh i mean two things about that number one this is his first game back but number two uh he's played most of the season at 12 so talk about games in the boots um you know we're not sure i was going to do but then again um the italian team now is different to what we've known over the years it used to be 14 names and uh and uh, parisi um up to now but now they do have garbisi they do have their skipper lamoro who can do a job they do have this lad capuzzo who's uh who can score a try out of nowhere if you let him and um you know they they can play if you if you let them and so you know they, they, they but you know we know our lads will be well aware of all the threats and um like you say they're playing they're playing with that confidence so they should be able to assert themselves early especially in the key the the, the battle of the halfbacks i think we should look to even yeah. though it's not our ideal starting they should be looking to win that battle straight away and there's definitely a, a path for them to do that all right that's for sure absolutely i just i don't want them i don't want us depending on our defense early just because we're not overly worried. I, I, my phraseology is terrible today. Apologies, mm. but we can't we we can't change our game plan. We've got to go forward and put the foot on the throat from minute one to minute eighty one or whatever. Don't depend on our defense. We can use defense down the line, but this is this is a score we've got to put up. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the officials, and as you can see there, Mike Adamson has the whistle with Wayne Barnes uh, on the sidelines and uh, Marius Junker uh, up in the booth. The uh, weather predicted for Rome on Saturday afternoon is meant to be uh, partly sunny, uh, seven degrees, uh, not much rain, uh, not much wind, so it looks pretty much uh, good conditions for some rugby, which of course brings us to our prediction time. And we're going to start with a match which almost didn't go ahead um, in Mm. Cardiff, uh, Wales against England. How do you see that 
I was think I've been thinking a lot about this game um, because I don't know. Wales have one game in them. You know what I mean? They they will have one game where the emotion and the intensity meet, and nothing makes you more emotional or intense than playing England. So I don't know. I don't know if they have it in them. Well, I think if they can keep it close, they might squeak it. Now my heart, my my brain says England by kind of ten. But if they if Wales can keep that momentum going uh, and just keep that intensity up for one game, they might get close and it might be a score either way. But I, in reality, I think it's England plus 10. Yeah, it's definitely possible for them. All right. Yes. And uh, then on Sunday, we've got uh, France against Scotland. Um, tough one. I don't know. Uh, I think I think the scrum, I think the French scrum is a bit much. I think, uh, but I don't think it's a big score though. I don't think there's a bonus point in it. I think it's, it might be plus seven, plus ten, plus twelve. Like nothing, nothing big. I don't think there's, I don't think there's six tries for one side in it. Yeah, the um, the French are known for you know making tries out of nothing, but that's kind of what the Scots have been doing as well. Mm. They've been uh, been efficient with any kind of breaks, and you know, you, in any given match, you're going to be given the breaks, and if you know the, the Scots can take them, they can definitely keep it close. And of course, you, uh, uh, if anyone knows the the French uh, way of playing, it'll be Finn Russell. So um, it'd be very interesting to see how that goes. Not a foregone conclusion at all, as it may have been in previous years. And of course, that leaves us with our match in Rome. Yeah, we are. It's it's twenty plus. It's it, it's got to be 20, 25, 30 points, uh, and it's got to be an obviously another bonus point. It would be nice to keep them out, uh, try wise all the way through. Uh, I do see us giving away a couple of kickable penalties, but it's it's thirty points plus. Yeah, I mean, there's always things that can go wrong. We can, um, you know, the, uh, certain combinations may not work out. Or, of course, there's always the thing of an early red card. Could it be a leveler? There's all these kind of things. But 15 on 15 and, you know, uh, in a, you're looking at it, ahead, of, you can't think more than a, than a big iron win. They have to go for that. If they're going to be confident about this number one ranking, confident about this favorites tag and all this stuff, they've got to go out and put up a score. And uh, that's what, that's what they'll be looking to do. And uh, there's nothing, it's not arrogance on our part to, to predict that. It's just, uh, just basically what, what we know they're expecting of themselves. So it's uh, right for us to expect it too. Okay, listen, uh, we're going to leave it there, man. Uh, thanks very much, Kigo, for joining me for another preview show. Everyone check out his website at Kigo Laughs dot com for news of his latest gigs but you want to tell us about something you got coming up as well yeah absolutely on tuesday the 28th of feb i'll be in the middle of dublin uh in mulligan haynes on dame street uh for crack den comedy club well worth your time uh savage lineup and uh yeah i'll be up there talking rubbish as everyone who is listening and watching to this podcast i'm very good at and uh, of course you check out his podcast as well um, apologies up front as well there as and um, the links as ever are in the program notes right also be sure to join our conversation on mastodon throughout the match then maybe head over to our facebook page at full time leave your thoughts there in the meantime enjoy the six nations weekend everyone and stay safe salon <laughs>